Good morning, everybody. How are you? It's lovely to see you all. I'd like to introduce you to our assembly. Our assembly today is the Great British Bird Watch. You might have heard about the RSPB, and if you look on the right hand side, you can see the logo, which stands for the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. This is a very important charity in our country, and it looks after the birds um, and allows us to look at how they live around our country. Here are some very common birds that you may have seen around school, in your garden, on the street as you're walking to and from school. You may have seen some as you go shopping, sitting on the fence, just looking for food or just flying around. Some of the birds make a very loud sound. One of them goes, caw, caw, caw. Others make little cheeping sounds like cheep, cheep, cheep. Let's see if you can spot what they are. Here we are, let's have a look at all of our birds that we may see around our towns and in our gardens. This little fella is a blackbird and you can see he's a blackbird because of his orange beak and the orange around his eye. The blackbirds aren't very tall, um, they're about a medium sized bird but they are distinctive because of the orange around the eye and the orange beak. Our next bird with a beautiful speckled belly, the purple head with a little tinge of green and the big orange yellow beak um, is called a starling. Now a starling, they fly around within a flock of birds. That's what we call it when we see lots of the same birds, a flock of birds. And starlings will fly around in the evening usually as the sun's setting and they make beautiful patterns in the sky. See if you can spot some. We usually see them in the summer um, or at autumn time, but I know there are some about, so keep your eyes out for that one. Now this bird is, is the crow and it is quite a large bird. It's got a great big beak here. It's quite a tall, it's much taller than the starling and than the blackbird. And these crows are very distinctive because they make a huge sound. They're the birds that go caw, caw, caw. They are all over. If you have a look, you will see them and you might not see them, but you may hear them because they are very, very vocal. Now our friend here, this is a pigeon, she could also be found in the towns, she'll be found in your garden, she could be found in the woods and they make a different sound from the crow. They make a cooing sound like coo, coo, coo and you may see them when people are giving them bits of bread and food in the, in the, in the towns. Bread isn't good for birds so we mustn't really give them bread, what they need are seeds. And here's our little friend, the robin. This is a male robin and he's male because he's got the red breast. A female robin doesn't have a red breast. You will see him around now in winter. And I saw one on my fence, my garden fence on Saturday. I see them as I'm walking around the street and they sometimes stop and they chirp at me and they've got a lovely little chirp. Just see if you can keep your eyes open this week for these five birds. I'm sure you will be able to find them. Here are some other birds from our country. I wonder if you know what they are. You may have seen them flying around. Uh, you may have seen them in your garden, but might not know what they are. There are a couple of unusual birds. However, I'm going to have a little quiz with you. Let's see if you know. Do, can you think which is the blue tit? Which is the kingfisher? Which is the kestrel? Which is the goldfinch? Which is the great tit? And which is the sparrow? Let's have a look, see if you were right. So this bird up here, it's got a beautiful red head and it's got an yellow on its wings. It's got really clear markings with a white around its head as well. Let's see what that one is. That one is a goldfinch. Now this one, you often see this one down by the riverside or down by the canal and you will see that diving into the water. Can you have a, have a guess what that is? What's the clue in the name? That's right, it's the kingfisher. Now, this is a little bird which you will see everywhere. You will hear it singing, you will hear it flying, you will, you will hear it tapping on your footpath or on your ceiling and if you've got a conservatory. That's right, that's a sparrow. Now, this beautiful bird is called a, ke a kestrel. You will see it hovering and it hovers 
it hovers at the side of the road and it's looking for a little mouse and it dives down and it gets its mouse. I know what this one is. Now, these two are very, very similar. They are slightly different. Look at their heads. That's the clue. This one is called a great tit. And the great tit, or sometimes called the cold tit, has got the black head, the black chin, and then it's got the yellow, yellow chest. It's very similar to this one, and that's the blue tit. And that's got the blue head, and that's how you can tell them. Now then, in the country, we're going to be doing the Great British Garden Bird Watch, and they're la the RSPB are launching this. So how does it help? First of all, it gives us 40 years of information and it helps us to understand the challenges faced by our birds. Some of our birds are disappearing. Some of our birds fly away to different countries and they fly back into our country. And I think that in the winter particularly, we can monitor the birds that live in our country and we can see what's happening to them. This bird here that you can see on the left is a spotted woodpecker. And I was really lucky. I had one of those in my garden last summer. I was very lucky to see that. Did you know that song thrushes, there was a decline, a huge decline. The song thrush was in the top 10 birds of, in 1979. But by now in 2019, there's a decline and now they're in the number 20, number 20 and they've declined by 76 percent i wonder if you could hear what a song thrush sounds like now then this is our little sparrow and and what the rspb have found by the great british garden bird watch is that the the sightings have dropped by 53 percent which means that we're not seeing as many of them all about However, if we do look around, we will see them on the fence, we'll see them in the school grounds, we'll see that you'll see them in your garden and you'll see them everywhere you go. You'll hear them as well. You might hear a bush and they're singing in the bushes. And that's because in the last 10 years, their numbers have grown, grown showing that we're beginning to see some signs of recovery. Results like this help us spot the problems, but really importantly, it's the, it shows us what we need to do to put things right and we can investigate what's causing our sparrows and our birds to disappear. How do we bring birds to our patch? So here's a picture of my bird feeders here and this is a picture on my fence and you will see that I have some uh, bird houses that I'm hoping to get birds to come and lay, and lay their eggs in. Here's my bird feeders and here's some more of, of bird feeders and you can see that birds will come and get their food from the bird feeders wherever you put them in your garden. So how do you begin bird watching? First of all, you pick a time. You can choose any hour, any hour between the 29th and the 31st of January. So just two days. So whether you're an early bird or a night owl, you can still take part. You might be wondering how you can bring birds to your garden. Whilst I was out walking last week, I listened really carefully to see if I could hear any birds. And I'd like you to listen to see if you can hear any birds. Listen carefully, see if you can hear any birds. Listen carefully, see if you can hear any birds. I then went round the corner and then all of a sudden, this is what I heard. And from here, you can see that there are birds all around us. This was just around the corner. So in order to attract the birds to our gardens, we have to give them some food and we have to give them a reason to visit our gardens. Some of our trees have berries on, but sometimes we do have to give food and we have to give water. So what I'd like to do is to show you how we do that.
Hello everybody, this is my garden and I'm going to show you how we're going to be looking after the birds. As you can see, I've got some empty bird holders, bird seed holders, so we're going to fill those up and I've also got a lovely bird bath because even though it's snowing and it's wet, the birds will still need their water to drink and sometimes have a little bath in as well. So the first thing we do, get all these lovely seeds and I pour them into my jug. And then, all we have to do is pour them in there. And then the birds can help themselves to the seeds. I pop the lid on, choose a little branch so it's out of the way and the birds are hidden. And I think we're going to pop that up there. And I'm going to be able to watch that one. I'm going to do the next one. on stop the water getting in and let's find another little branch there we go and now we're going to put my little bird dish up here and I think I'm going to hang that there so the birds could help themselves to a drink so we just pop it up there fill it with water and I will watch that every day to make sure that it doesn't ice over and that the birds have got a lovely fresh water to drink. Thank you everybody. You it's really, really easy. First of all, get your ears used to listening for birds, find out where they are. And then if you pop those in your garden, I am sure you will get some little visitors coming to see you, just looking for their seeds, especially whilst it's cold. So how do you spot the birds? I will be sending out a bird checker out to you over a dojo so you'll be able to have a look at that. You can also just look on the internet, look on Google, you can find the birds. So have a look around. If you're out with mums and dads, just get a photograph of it and then you could be able to say what bird it is. I wonder what you'll see. I will also send this poster out for you so you can have a look there are lots of birds on there and you'll be able to identify them I think it'd be interesting to see how many birds we can see I bet you'll be surprised at how many varieties there are once you find the birds what you have to do is tell the RSPB which birds you've seen count the birds you see in your garden or from your balcony or anywhere ignore any birds that are still in flight though if they're flying don't count them only the ones who are stepping on the ground or on the branches or on the wall on the fence just count those to avoid double counting just record the highest number of birds you see at any one time but not a running total these are two lovely little blue tits there Mums and dads, everybody else, if you want to have a look, here's the, the link that you need. Or all you need to do is to type in the Great British Garden Bird Watch and you will be able to get all of the resources there. Let's get twitching. That's what we call a bird, bird watcher. Bye, twitchers.